This little dresser had so much veneer damage that I decided to just simply cut it off and um, add a new base. So you can see there was a nice natural separation. So I just got to it, got my hammer out, took off um, the front um, little molding there. I got out my tape measure and measured from the top of the dresser down to the bottom because I wanted to make sure I got a straight cut. And then I set up my circular saw with a straight edge and I clamped that straight edge down. And then I was able to just run that circular saw along the straight edge to get a nice straight cut. I got a portion of that veneer off and then I did a second pass to get the rest of the legs off. Then I set it up and I did the exact same thing on the other side. This is the area that I have to work with to attach a new base. So I was going to use the thicker one, but I noticed when I used this one that I could not, I had nothing to attach the side piece to because you can see it took up this whole area and I have nothing right here, it's just empty. So what I've decided to do is I have a thinner piece. This is a one by two and I will attach this one to the front and that leaves me this piece of wood here that I can in turn, turn it sideways and this will be the back piece. And then that is wide enough that I'll also be able to drill down and then attach my legs there. So that's, that's the plan there. So I'm just using my brad nailer and I'm using the lattice strips that I've cut and I am just covering up the seam between the base, the new base, and um, where the old veneer is. So I'm making sure everything's lined up and then I'm just using that brad nailer to just simply adhere the lattice. So now I'm going to attach the legs to the support that I added on the bottom. I'm just coming in an inch on each side and I'm marking um, an X and then I will place it over and I'm going to drill a hole. Now this set was really great because it actually came with a drill bit and it came with a drill bit not only for the hole but a drill bit for the pilot holes. So after I got the legs up, I turned it up and one of the legs came off. So obviously the nails were not strong enough or really need screws. So I went ahead and screwed it into the supports. And then actually, which you don't see, I did this off camera as I actually cut extra blocks and glued them in underneath each leg so it's nice and secure and it's not going anywhere. So after that, I was able to move on to the base and I used my nail punch to punch in all those little extra um, brad nails that I put in and then I covered up those holes holes with plastic wood.
now I'm ready to move on to sanding. I was, I'm gonna paint the body, so I'm just doing a scuff sanding, but on the drawers, I went ahead and did a full sand, trying to get that paint off to see if I could salvage them to be able to either do like a paint wash or a stain. And so there, you can see there's a little damage on that bottom right area. So I did have to come back, which I'll do later and show you I did some veneer repair, but I was able to do a nice sanding and I think I'm gonna salvage them. So I moved on to taping everything off and priming the body. On the top, you can see I have some damage along both of the sides. So I have filled it in, all the damage, but I am gonna paint those sides, but I don't want to paint the top because it's in really good shape and it can definitely be salvaged. So I try to salvage the top if possible because a wood finish is just more durable. So I'm going to paint wash the top, but the sides I'm going to um, go ahead and paint and prime the same as the body. Okay, before my second coat, I'm going to go through and just do a very light sanding. Um, it might not look like it needs to be sanded, but there's always little, oh, kind of like a little gritty texture after you do a um, one coat. And so you always wanna sand in between your coats to really get a nice smooth finish. The best way to tell if you're ready is to just use the finger test. So just run your finger over your hand, over that area and see if it's actually smooth. Cause sometimes it doesn't look great, but it feels good. So you see right here, I had a little area that had some oh, kind of a pooling. So I went through and I sanded it really well. And then I just use my finger to run over it to see, does it feel smooth? And if it feels smooth, then it's ready for your second coat. Okay, so now I'm ready to paint. I'm using Bellwood by Fusion Mineral Paint here. So with Fusion, um, the way I like to paint with Fusion is I like to put it in a tray. I just missed a little bit of water in it. I missed a little bit of water on my actual piece that I'm painting. Then I use a angled brush to go in and get all the corners first, and then I use a roller for the rest. You can spray it, but here you see I just simply used a uh, paintbrush and a roller. So um, here I'm using Zebra's angled brush it gets into those little tight spots really well honestly for their uh, rollers my favorite roller to use with fusion is the one that they actually sell through um, the name of the brushes or the name of the company is I believe Stallmeister and they are fabulous it's a very tight nap it's probably less than a quarter inch um, nap um, and it works really well with their paint. And so that's actually the one I would recommend. If you're using Fusion, that's the, that's the brand that I would recommend for rollers. So now I'm gonna do my whitewash. I'm using Cashmere by, again, Fusion Mineral Paint. And I'm going to do a whitewash first on my drawers and then I'm gonna go back and do a tan wash. So you can do lots of different ratios. This particular one I'm doing, I'm doing four parts water and I'm doing one part paint. And that's going to just give me a nice, real basic, um, watered down paint wash. I like to mist the board and then I just simply wipe on the paint wash. I have some damage to the veneer on some of the drawers. So I picked up this kit on Amazon and it comes with 
all of these um, little tubes of wood filler and you can mix your colors in order to start trying to fill this in. So it comes with this little card that can kind of help you um, with your color combinations. But I'm just gonna kind of go for it. Um, this is something I'm working on this year is veneer repair, something I wanna get better at. Um, so I'm gonna start 2023. So um, I'm gonna start, um, they always say to start with your lightest color. So um, this is probably the closest to the actual wood repair. So I'm gonna start with that. Um, I might have to be, uh, might have to blend colors. So I'm just gonna start there. I'm gonna put a little bit on a paper plate and that'll allow me to kind of have also an area that I can do some mixing of colors. So I'm just gonna fill it in to kind of get a base first because this is my wood filler. I've gone over this with a um, paint wash in um, kind of an off-white color. And so it's uh, reading, I'm also, once I fix this, I'm going over the whole thing um, with a tan wash. So I need it to um, try to match the wash that I have right now. So in between my coats, I'm going to, I hit it with a um, heat gun. So now I'm going to start mixing some colors. I've got this kind of caramely color and it, where it's way too warm, I'm gonna try to cool it down with um, this gray. So I'm gonna try to mix these two colors together and see what this gives me. So I've got some gray. I'm gonna pull a little bit of that brown and see if that can kind of get me a little bit closer to the color I'm looking for. That's pretty good. I'm just gonna see how that's, I'm probably pulling mainly the gray, but then just a little bit of the brown, just to kind of warm it up a little bit. Definitely need some of the brown. I would say it's more of a caramel color probably, or a camel, not caramel. Probably more of a camel color. Wow, that's really blending nicely. I just need it to kind of blend in with the existing surface because I'm gonna wash the whole thing with tan. So that's looking pretty good. I feel like this is red but I am gonna wash the whole thing, so I'm hesitant to fuss with it too much more, but I do tend to fuss, so I may just mix, like I feel like that's too dark, that area. I may try to lighten that just a little, because it has quite a bit of gray in it, just right there. <laughs> oh, I have a hard time letting things be. All right, let's try just a tad. Then I go too dark. I might pull in some of this brown. And then I'm just gonna kind of feather it out. Not bad. I think once I do the wash over it, I think that's good. So I'm gonna try another side. That is a great combination. So I use this kind of a mid-tone brown this is yellow sandalwood and I mixed it with the gray. And so it just tones it down enough to where I think that is a great, pretty great match. Especially once I'm going to, I'm gonna tan wash the whole thing. So I just 
kind of need to blend it so that it'll tan wash over. The base that I made was a lighter wood, and so I had to go ahead and um, stain it with, I used Provincial by Men Wax first, and then I went back, you can see, and I'm putting the tan wash over it. So that just kind of helped me blend it in with the drawers, because the drawers, I believe they were mahogany. So I did a, a white wash and then a tan wash, and so this is a different species of wood. So I had to try to figure out how to get it to match with the washes. So the nice thing about a wash is, you know, you can kind of fuss with it. You, you put some on and then you wipe it back. And then sometimes you need it to be a little bit more um, opaque. And so you just simply brush it on and you leave it on and you, you don't, you don't wipe it back. So you can kind of manipulate it, um, let it dry, maybe do another coat. And so if you don't like it, you could even sand it off, but you know, it, there's a lot of freedom with the paint washes. So you just kind of keep messing with it until you find um, the finish that you like. And then I did come back through and um, did the, I did the um, legs as well. So after I had the, all the veneer repair, I went ahead and did a tan wash on all of the drawers. And that just kind of helped blend in all the repairs that I did. As a final step, I used General Finishes Flat Out Flat and I sealed all of the drawers. And it just gives a beautiful, very soft sheen and allows that wood tone to come through for a really beautiful raw wood look. So let's take a look back at where we started. All of that veneer damage and the old hardware and just really sad little dresser. And here we are now. Beautiful. Wood grain was able to save, brand new hardware, brand new base, brand new legs, and I think it turned out really good. So tell me what you think. Subscribe and like. Thanks so much for watching.